back with you again uh, in this kind of environment. It's a, a great environment to really sit and chat and maybe uh, dig a little bit into God's Word. Um, certainly the, the sanctuary is beautiful and a great place to be and to, to celebrate, but you know sometimes it doesn't hurt just to kind of sit back and, and casually have conversation about uh, the God who loves us. Um, today we're going to take a run at uh, Colossians 3. Uh, verses 12 through 17, um, and see what it might have to say to us about um, about next year, about this coming year of 2023. Uh, see if there's something we might learn here. But let's start with the scripture. Um, hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion and kindness, and humility, and, and gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other. Forgive each other. If any of you has a grievance against someone, well, forgive as the Lord has forgiven you. 
And over all these virtues, put on love, which bonds them all together in perfect love and perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom throughout the Psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. May God grant understanding to this reading of God's holy word, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's come to God in prayer. Wow, Lord, it's a new year, opportunity to reset and move forward. And it, we have that opportunity every day, but it seems at New Year's it kind of forces us to look at it. Lord, help us to reset, to come back to the things and the charge that you have given us to, to love and to care and to be gentle and kind with each other and um, all the things you've called us to do and to be. It's different and it will force us to change and which we don't seem to enjoy doing a whole lot of and yet if we change in the right ways, if we repent, if we turn back to you and turn back to doing things you, your way, not only does the world get better for us, but the world gets better and we make a positive difference. And I think that's uh, what we've, we've been called to do, why you put us here, to make a positive difference in this world. So Lord, well, talk to us today, please. Help us as we sit back and relax and recover from the, uh, the days that have gone before this, um, as we kind of spend some time with our family uh, as we, we look at the year ahead, fill us with the Holy Spirit so that we might do what you have called us to do. And all the things we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, it's New Year's Day. Um, we know that. Probably some of us know it because of, well, how tired and um, how Let's put it this way, how full we are from overindulging last night. But um, it's New Year's Day. It's a, it's a, a place where we reset. Um, it's a place, there's nothing magical about it. I used to remember uh, as I was growing up, um, two times a year, I would get out of bed and run to the mirror to see what had changed. You know how how I had grown. How and it, <laughs> one was New Year's Day and one was my birthday, and I was always disappointed to find really not much had changed physically. Um, and frankly, if anything was going to change, um, it wasn't going to change instantaneously. See, twenty twenty two now changes to twenty twenty three. And the number changes, but really does the world change just because of that change of a number? See, I think people get the mistake that it's magical, that, that everything is going to change for the better because we tear a page off the, um, off the calendar. We kind of wave our hands and it's magically going to get better and everything's going to be better this coming year. Um, and... The reality of the situation is it's not going to be if we just sit and let it go by itself. I, and I, I think part of the process that we've got to go through is to really codify and, and inventory what do we want to change? What things do we want to change and how do we want them to change? Specifically, not I want things to get better. Well, that's very nice. But that doesn't tell me what, you, what has to happen for that to happen. I mean, if we looked at it, I suspect if I asked the question and we were one-on-one, -on -one, some of you would say, well, we want the church to grow and thrive. Um, we, we want the economy to get better. We want everybody to get, a, get along. 
uh, and, and be at peace. We'd want poverty to go away. Uh, well, actually, what we really want is just to stop hearing about poverty. Um, we wish the violence would stop on our streets and that would go away and, and not so many people would, would kill each other, or at least not that we know about. Um, that war would stop and that we'd find peace in the world. Um, all great things, but uh, one small problem. We want God to change all of that. We don't want to necessarily be part of it or to be uh, required to do anything. We just want all that to happen. And sorry, folks, but that's not the way God works. God has allowed us and given us the, the benefit and, and the right and, and the responsibility to change things positively. Um, we can't just dump it off on God. Otherwise, we become robots or, or we become... Um, spoiled if nothing else see God wants us to change things but we can't change things until well we change in other words nothing is going to change in this world until we change we've got to be something different than what we are today now is it a major change or a minor change I don't know I don't know what's going on with you I know what's going on with me I know that if if uh, things are going to change in my world, I've got to make some pretty, probably pretty major changes. Uh, I've got to get things better. I've got to get things realigned. I've got to look at the world and say, hey, you know, um, if I did this differently, life would be not only better for me, but better for the people around me. And so if I really want things to change, I've got to change me in that process. The question then becomes, what about ourselves? Are we willing to change? <laughs> See, most of us aren't willing to change anything. We want the world to change around us. We want things to get better, but we're not willing to change within ourselves. As a matter of fact, it's something we fight against. And in fact, I think we, we have to really embrace the fact that we have got to become different from who we are, or at least do, do things differently. I'm not so sure you got to change and be different from who you are. But necessarily, I think we've got to change how we do things, how we approach things, why we approach things the way we do. See, um, I think we've got to ask the question, what does God want us to change into? What does God want us to become? And I think the answer to that is pretty simple. God wants us to become what he intended for us from the, from the beginning. But the reality is, we didn't, we won't, and so we now have to go back and take a look and say, what is it that God wants us to become? And, and be intentional about that. I think one of the first things we gotta do in that change though is to remember that we are loved, that God loves us um, no matter what, no matter what we've done, no matter how, um, how we've not done what God wanted, how much we strayed, God still loves us. And, and I think if we get that one right, we can begin the journey to loving others no matter what they've done, uh, which is what we're called to do. But God, you know, as, as Jesus says towards the end of his ministry, as the Father has loved you, so as, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. So love each other that way. And that's hard. We have to change to do that. It's not how we're naturally bent, or at least not how we bent ourselves to be. We are beloved, and we, we have to learn, I think, to, and be intentional, uh, if not um, work hard at loving others. But you can't do that if you don't get a sense that you're loved yourself. And we are loved. God does love us. See, according to Colossians, we need to change. We need to clothe ourselves with compassion. We need to clothe ourselves with kindness. We need to be humble and, and clothe ourselves with humility. Um, we need to, to be meek. And by the way, if uh, that word bothers you, and it does, it has me for a long time, go look it up. It's, uh, meekness is not as bad as we think it is. And so... Uh, 
and maybe that's another sermon, but the reality of the situation is we've got to be meek if we're going to live our lives as God wants us to. Uh, we've got to we've got to clothe ourselves with patience, and I think I probably have on too many occasions uh, said, you know, dear Lord, give my my prayer is, dear Lord, give me patience and give it to me right now. Um, patience is not one of my strong strong suits, and for most of us, it's not our strong suit. And yet, with patience, it's pretty amazing what happens. And I, I look back over my life, and I look back over my life, particularly even in the past year, um, I look at the times when I was forced into patience, um, kicking and screaming, and, and yet I had no choice. I had to be patient. And the outcome of that patience was pretty incredible, something I would never have been able to have um, if I had not been patient. And so I guess we need all to clothe ourselves with patience. It's just not something we normally run into. Um, and I think we've got to clothe ourselves with forgiveness. We've got to learn to forgive others. Um, and actually, let me take a half step back. I think we've got to learn to forgive ourselves first, because God does. Um, but there's stuff that we, we get hung up on that we can't forgive ourselves for. And, and your world will never be right if you don't learn to give, forgive yourself and also then learn to forgive others. But I think above all, we need to clothe ourselves in love. I think we need to learn how to love. I think we need to be intentional in loving others. I think that we talk about it as if it were something easy, but it isn't. It isn't easy to love others because in order to love others, we got to give up our selfishness and our self-interests. And we've got to be willing to act in others, in, to the benefit of others, sometimes even at our own expense. So we've got to look at love and we've got to learn how to do it. And we've got to be intentional in doing that. And uh, then we'll find this thing called peace. And peace isn't something that, we, and I, as I preached when, when it was the topic uh, during Advent, Peace is not something it's easy to find, but you've got to, uh, when you find it, it's a, it's a marvelous thing. I think one of the things we've got to do and put on our to-do list is talk with God regularly. Um, Paul says, uh, talk, pray, and pray unceasingly. Um, and I think, <laughs> as I, I talked about when I did the prayer uh, segment of the this, uh Discipleship class, um, I think we make prayer a whole lot more complicated than it is or needs to be. You don't have to have all the fancy words that were written by somebody else who spent their whole time writing prayers. You know, sometimes it's just, hey, God. <laughs> I, I come back to the book that kind of really turned my, my head and attention on that, uh, which was written by a priest. It was called, uh, you know, Are You Running With Me, Jesus? And basically, uh, it's, it's a series of simple prayers. The first one he, got, he offers is, uh, he said, when I get up in the morning, I say, Hey, God, thanks for another day. Um, we'll talk later, but uh, I got to run. Uh, are you running with me? And it's a powerful prayer. Try it. It's a, it really is a powerful prayer. Powerful prayer. And then talk with God regularly. Uh, and by the way, talk with God means you listen to. What is God telling you? What are the things you see happening around you that are talking to you, that are telling you what you need to do, what God wants from you, what, the, what others need from you, and what you need to be doing? So, you know, talk with God regularly, but listen to God regularly and study God's word. And, and it was interesting, we, we did Bible study for the, the last um, discipleship class. And maybe I should put with this, not just study, because it was kind of misunderstood, I believe, when I did the class. You read God's word every day. You have to, if you're gonna stay kind of current <laughs> with the news. 
But studying God's word is really something that takes time. And you don't have to do that every day, but I think you got to do some of it. I think you got to dig into uh, the, the word and to dig into the, the scripture uh, beyond just the, the brief read. Um, and that takes some work. But it also then says, you know, I'm, I'm committed to doing what God has asked me to do. And then the Colossians says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. In other words, use that as your checkpoint, your jumping off point. Um, the, the Several years ago, there was this whole thing, what would the bracelets, WWJD, what would God or what would Jesus do? I have a problem with that because we can't do what Jesus would do. We're not God. I would rather see that those bracelets say WW, WWJ, WUD. What would Jesus want us to do? Because that's easier to fulfill. And God will grant us the strength to do what we're wanted to do, but we've got to do it out of our own free will. And I think we've got to start asking the question, what is it that God wants us to do? I mean, I, I know in my own life, and maybe it's just me, but if I, if I kind of act with a, only with a gut reaction, I have a tendency to do what I want to do. I have a tendency to respond to things from my own selfish interest, as opposed to saying, you know, what would God want me to do here? Um, and even doing that sometimes, asking that question, doesn't get me to the right place. But I've got to commit to doing what God wants me to do. Colossians tells us to teach and learn and counsel and be counseled with wisdom and compassion. In other words, to constantly say, what am I supposed to learn from this? What do I already know that I can share with someone who has a need for it right now? Um, but to do so not to show how smart we are uh, or to how much show how much we know, but to really say, okay, how can I be of help here? What positive difference can I make in someone else's life? And by the way, what do I need to add to my own knowledge base in order to continue to grow and then continue to offer that growth to other people? Colossians tells us to do everything in the name of Jesus and with thanks to God. Um, somebody said to me one day, what do you mean by that? And my answer to that was, um, think about it. Can you look someone in the eye and say, I hate you in the name of Jesus? Um, I'm going to hit you and hurt you in the name of Jesus? I think we're, we're fooling each other if we think we can, or ourselves rather, if we think we can do that. I think if you're going to do something in the name of Jesus, it turns out being the right thing, provided we look at it through the lens of the name of Jesus. What would Jesus want us to do? What would God want us to do? And then when we, we get the ability or even the opportunity to do some things, um, we can say thank you to God. Um, and by the way, every opportunity you get, you're not going to necessarily think it's the greatest thing in the world. But thank God for the opportunity because sometimes it's in the it's in the negative stuff that we get the opportunity to do or when we have to do things we don't like or enjoy that we can learn most about ourselves and about God. By the way, that's not a bad list of resolutions. As we go into the New Year's, as you write out your resolutions, and I don't know about you, but I always have a problem writing them out. I don't have a problem letting them go after about two or three days, but if I can sit down and write a list of resolutions, and maybe I pick a couple out of this list and, and focus on them, or maybe one at a time, uh, take a little bit of Ben Franklin's uh, uh, advice and take one and concentrate on it for a month, and then pick another one and concentrate on that for a month, ultimately you'll get really good at 12 things. Um, it's, it's not a, but this is not a bad place to start as you're looking for resolutions for the coming year. See, maybe if we each put a couple of 
our own resolutions and put these on a couple of these on our own list of resolutions and then commit to fulfilling them not just letting them go after a month or whatever but we or a couple of days rather but maybe if we put a couple on our list and we commit to fulfilling them in 2023 2023 might just be a happy new year which is my wish for you may god grant you blessings in this coming year Let's see where we can go. Amen. Whisper.